right from the younger days, he had a burning desire to study a lot, own his business, and in later part of the life, he would like to impart education to the next generation. During his lifetime, he has achieved all these three goals. He did his PhD and he was he, he has gone through several technical and management courses in India and abroad. Having achieved this goal of excellent education, he turned to achieve the goal of his own business. To have experience, he joined Larson and Tobro in 1966. 1966, oh, that's my birth, birth year too. I was born that time. Thereafter, he joined IBM and worked with them in various capacities for seven years. Thereafter, he founded DSS, a computer service software and consulting co company. DSS established joint ventures and subsidiaries outside India. The company is running very, very successfully. In 1983, he, he established an education uh, educational trust uh, titled Data Systems Research Federation. This foundation was the first instance where University of Pune accorded appellation for the postgraduate status studies to an institute floated by a private professional company. Friends, thus Ramesh achieved all the three goals in his lifetime and is a very, very happy person. He has one wife, Shubh, and one son, Kapil. Having said all this, I request uh, Rotary and Ramesh, Ramesh to talk to us on Ikigai. Uh. Thank you very much. Thanks, Narayan Bhav. Uh, I will share the screen back to the screen now. Okay. Can everybody see the screen, please? Yes. Uh, I would suggest that please switch off your video because so that uh, we have a good bandwidth. Okay. Ramesh, go ahead. We are able to see the slide. No problem. Yeah. No, what I suggest is this. You switch off your videos okay. so that then the uh, kind of reception is a lot better. Uh, somebody has that switching off. No, every screen, every point, Jeez. everybody can do that. Anyway, now... Uh, uh, President Janinder Manot, Secretary Ashish, and fellow Rotarians. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, chance to talk to you. When Narayan Bhau asked me to speak, I was wondering about selection of the topic. Then I recalled a compliment that somebody, I think it was Raja, who paid to Narayan Bhau by saying that the clock of Narayan Bhau's age refuses to move forward from 60. What he said today, it has moved back to 54. I thought of this topic, Ikigai, to add my two bits to the evergreen Narayan Bhau's Jest for Life. Having said that, I welcome you all to this subject, Ikigai, which is the Japanese recipe for a long and happy life. All of us look for a healthy, long and meaningful life. Japan has the largest number of disability-free and active centenarians. They must be doing something correct. Ikigai is claimed to be the basis of this longevity. In today's talk, I'll attempt to explain the concept. Longevity. As a subject, it has been the quest of human being for a long time. There has been a fascination to the evergreen life stories and myths. We have been hearing them from the childhood. The first one, Amrit, 
that emerged from the Samudra Manthan and grabbed by the gods and the demons thereafter have always been fighting with them to get it back. We know of rishis who lived for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It was rumored during my engineering college days when Chinese invaded to annex Tibet that the leaders believed that Tibet had the secret or the elixir of life. Unfortunately, both Mao Zedong and Chao Enlai died there or soon thereafter without achieving the secret of long life. In the present times, it has its own needs. What's the context in the current times? All of us during our working years have more or less followed this life cycle. We spent years and years together in getting educated for the profession which we wanted to be in. Thereafter, we got a job and kept on working for 35 to 40 years, the most productive years. We have been a part of the rat race to meet aspirations of material wealth and fulfill the worldly responsibilities. Long working hours and sleep deprivation has been the rule than an exception. We have deprived the families of the due attention and time. The normal excuse has always been, I am doing this for the family. And this illusion kept on making us postponing what we love to do next year. Hoping that we will retire in good health and money and enjoy the sunset years after retirement. However, longer, healthy, and disabled free life is the one which can really meet the goal of enjoyment in the sunset years. And if we can have, using the concept of Ikigai, a few more years, it would enable the fortunate ones to enjoy those, mean, those additional years meaningfully and joyfully. I trust everybody can hear me. Yes, 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 yes we can. Uh, coming to the next, what is this, lon you know, to find more about this longevity, there was a person by the name of Dan Buechner. He was working for National Geographic in USA. And in 2004, he set up, he teamed up with National Geographic also National Institute of Aging Studies in USA, and the world's best longevity researchers to study the subject of longevity. At that time, the Danish twin study had already been conducted, and it had proven that longevity is less than or equal to or a maximum of 20% due to genes and the balance 80% depends on the life cycle. Considering this, this multi-year research project 
finalize the methodology to be that they will identify cultures and geographical areas across the world where compared to USA, a large number, a larger, large population of healthy centenarians live. In those areas, they would study and find the factors or the attributes that contribute to their longevity. Find common denominators and the extent of consistency in all the areas identified. What did they find? Did they find any area like this across the world at all? The findings were that they did find areas and cultures across the world which could not be more diversified than what they found. And the team named them as Blue Zones. As a matter of fact, after concluding the study in 2008, Dan Buettner wrote a book titled Blue Zones, which was published by National Geographic and became a bestseller. The first area which was identified was Sardinia. Sardinia is in Italy and it's a Mediterranean island. The men live here the longest it has the largest number of males who live more than 100 years. The next place was Nicoya, which is in Costa Rica, in the Caribbean, and is a Pacific Coast Peninsula. In this place, they found that 33% of the population lives more than 90 years. And it is known as the island of long life. The next one they found was Icaria, which is in Greece and is an island in the Asian Sea. The next one is Loma Linda, which is located east of Los Angeles in California, USA. If I, if I recall correctly, it's about 80 miles east of LA. This is a population of 9,000 who are very conservative Seventh-day Adventist community. And they are among the longest living people in USA. The last one is Okinawa, which is a group of South Pacific islands in southern end of Japan. It has the largest number of centenarians in the world, especially the women. The women live the longest in the world in this uh, island. It's the most interesting place vis-a-vis -vis longevity. And, will talk, I, and I will talk about Okinawa a little bit more a little later. They interviewed, carried out medical tests, of nearly 263 centenarians on, and analyze them for the common denominators. What were the common denominators of the lifestyle that they believe or the locals believe contributed to their longevity? 
they found nine common lifestyle denominators across all the five regions, areas, and cultures. The first one is exercise. Did they find that those people, they do some fancy exercises like going to the gym, running marathons or whatever? Not at all. What they found was that they all move naturally. They don't use the gadgets. They use, they keep on walking from one place to the other. And the ladies for the household work don't use any fancy gadgets, but use, do it manually as in the olden times Indian households used to do. The next common factor was nutrition. In the nutrition, they found that major emphasis was on the plant-based diet and not on the meat-based diet. The plant-based diet consisting of, you know, all kinds of uh, fruits and fresh and fresh fruits, grains, vegetables, uh, beans, legumes, tofu, and so on. The consumption of meat was the highest of 5% in the five region, and the consumption of fish highest was about 6 to 7%. They all had a low BMI. That's the body mass index. For this, Okinawians had or have even now a BMI between 18 to 22. Most of us has a much higher one. But how do they, did they achieve this or they achieve this low BMI? No fancy dieting, no Atkins diet, no South Beach diet, no GM diet. What they follow is probably the best dieting tip, which is Hara Hachibu in Japanese. This is a 2,500 years old addict by Confucius. And it means 80% full, meaning stop it eating when you are 80% full. Don't overeat, don't eat up to the 100%. And the Japanese are these Okinawans. Repeat this like grace before they sit down for eating. And they repeat this again after they finish eating. Their plates are small as compared to our dinner plates or lunch plates so that they have lesser quantity of food in the plate. They drink wine in moderation. When you come to Sardinia, they have a couple of glasses of wine over lunch or dinner or whatever. When you come to Okinawa, they do have their motwat sake. I don't know what it means. The next point was connect. This is the one which has really been one of the main causes of longevity. In all the five zones, the family has always come first. Family orientation is very strong. Children and family given all the time which is needed. Elders are respected. And whenever possible, they live together, if not close by. 
they have very strong community. Very well connected religious inclination. For example, the Americans, the Lima, Lin, the Lima Linda people, they all go to the church or to the mass every Sunday and the community gets together. Very close-knit community. Okinawans are basically, basically follow Shinto and they once again have the same thing. There's a very interesting concept of moi, moai, which the Okinawans have, but it is applicable to all the regions. The Okinawans, right from the childhood, have five to six friends for life who share similar interests similar tastes and meet practically every day, if not physically on the phone, but definitely a couple of times a week physically. They meet, they talk, they, they listen to each other, they laugh at each other and they laugh. And that is the one which is one of the major reasons for their longevity. Outlook in life, they definitely believe in slow down. No need for running around like we people do today in the business world. Loma, no matter Loma Linda, no matter what happens, Whatever they are doing from Friday evening till Saturday evening for 24 hours, they are on Sabbath. They pray, they meet, they socialize, they laugh, and they go on the nature walks. Nature is the great restorer. It's the great teacher. It's the great mentor. I recall a long time ago, I used to have a mentor, an English person, who whenever there was a complex situation or a complicated problem, he would say, I will tell you tomorrow. I'm going to the uh, forest and I will talk to the trees. I'm sure I'll get the right answer and he always did. The Japanese have beautiful gardens in all their cities which gives a lot of succor to the high uh, stressed individuals. They have in their small little homes, bonsai trees. In other words, there's a lot of importance given to the nature. They believe in the concept of wabi-sabi. What does it stand for? It stands for look for beauty in imperfections. Beauty in the fleeting, changeable, and imperfect nature of this world. They look for Ichigo and Ichi-e. What is Ichigo and Ichi-e? The moment exists, this moment exists only now and won't come back again. live the moment happily and joyfully. And this is most of the time is the basis of the tea ceremony, which we find in Japan. I'm sure many of you have enjoyed that and participated in it. 
And finally, we have Ikigai, which is the purpose for or purpose of living. This is a concept that originated in Okinawa. Now I'll just talk a little bit about Okinawa and then have a little slightly deeper dive into Ikigai. Okinawa, where the Ikigai is supposed to have been originated, is a group of islands in central Ryoku part of the side, located in the southern end of Japan. Mind you, this is the place where in 1945, 200,000 Japanese were killed in a battle between American forces and the Japanese army. Obviously, the American forces won, but they have no hatred for any outsider. Interestingly, karate originated in Okinawa. The story runs that in 1609, the Japanese mainland, main Japan forces won the battle against Okinawa and barred them to have any weapons. And what did they do? they invented karate as a weapon. Karate consists of two words, kara meaning empty, and chi meaning hands. That means karate, empty hands you fight, no weapons. Let's look at the statistics of longevity in Okinawa. This has the longest disability-free life expectancy. Average life of 90 years for a large population. World's longest living women live here. As compared to USA, they have five times as many centenarians they have one-fifth rate of breast cancer, one-sixth rate of colon cancer, and hardly any cardiovascular vascular incidents. They must be doing something really correct. Let's try and see what is this Ikigai now. Ikigai consists of two words. Iki, which means life, and gai, which means worth. Ikigai roughly means the reason for being that encompasses a sense of purpose, a life of meaning and joy, a life of well-being, the reason to get up in the morning. If you have all these, it means you have found your Ikigai. And once you have found your Ikigai, the study says that this alone will add around seven years to your life. And this is not only in Okinawa. Icarians call it Plan G Veda. In other words, it's not only specific to Ikigai, to Okinawa, but they have really made it a very scientific. To understand Okinawa, I'd like to take you through its four dimensions. The first dimension is what you love to do. What is it? This is the passion. This is what, what is when you reach a state of flow. What's the state of flow? While you're working on it and doing it, you lose track of time, forget to eat and drink, and look forward to getting back to that work. 
I did not understand this concept, frankly, many years ago. I didn't even know about this. I had an English team who came to us for development of a project. And their chief technical officer was living on one sandwich a day. And when I asked him, how are you doing it? He said, I don't feel hungry because I'm totally focused on getting this project out. Let's look at the next dimension. The next dimension is what you are good at and what you have, in other words, what you have been trained to do and what you have been educated to do. That's your profession. In the real world, though we have been told that when we were young, everybody used to tell us you must make passion as your profession. Most of the people didn't even know what their passion was. And the ones who knew couldn't make that as a profession. Let's come to the next dimension now. The next dimension is what you can be paid for. In other words, you use your profession, provide services, either in a job or consultancy or uh, whatever, and you're paid in exchange of that. This is necessary to produce a source of income for paying bills for living. Normally, especially in India, a person would get a job which may not be his or her passion. But the key is to recognize the passion and gradually work on it if necessary, on part-time basis, on pro bono basis, to get all these three together is most of the time is rather difficult. Unless you don't need the income for living, then of course you can get, you can make your profession as you know, you can make the passion as your profession and work for it. Let's look at the next dimension. The next dimension is what the world needs. You have a passion, you have got yourself trained and you are good at it. Your expertise is valued and you have, you are being paid for it. But is this what the world needs? What the world needs and what you recognize and what you can meet with it could become the mission of your life. The Ikigai is the one which sits in the intersection of all the four dimensions and provides the balanced purpose of life. Your purpose in life, when it meets with all the, all the dimensions, means you have found your ikigai. You have found your fountain of joy and fulfillment over long number of years. This is when you look forward to the next day and get up in the morning eager to get back to your ikigai. You do not even think of retiring. Actually, in the Okinawan dialect, there is no word like retirement. Blessed are those few who achieve this stage at a young age. I can think of people like Virat Kohli, or for that matter, actors like Amitabh Bachchan and writer like Hariwan Shrai Bachchan, but very, very few. 
let us see what would happen if one of these quadrants is missing. Let's say you, have, you are the lucky one and you have your passion, your profession, and your vocation all in common. If it does happen, I can assure you, you would be in all probability be very successful. You would make a lot of money and get satisfaction. However, at some point of time, the feeling of emptiness creeps in. All of us reach our stage of incompetence. Even though we are passionate about our profession and about our work, but the younger generation arrives. And this is when, if not earlier, you really start missing the fourth dimension and start asking as to what have I done in my life? Let's look at the next scenario. You don't have passion. You have your profession, you are being paid for it, and whatever you do, the world needs. In other words, probably you're working for an NGO or something like that. But you're working like a robo here. The world and family appreciates what you are doing, but there is no inner satisfaction which leads to a feeling of emptiness. Let's see the next scenario where you have vocation, you have mission, you have passion, but you have no profession, meaning thereby that you have not been trained, you are not good at it. The next result is there is excitement and complacency, but sense of uncertainty because you know that the moment a professional younger person arrives, you would perhaps not be there. If it is without vocation. Delight and fullness, but no earned wealth. Frankly speaking, it is, for the younger generation, it is possible only if you're born with a silver spoon. But for people like us, a lot among us, this is the Ikigai model that would be more practical. We have several members who have made enough of money during their working career and are looking for contributing back to the society and world. For happy and enjoyable sunset years, you should find your Ikigai. Fortunately for us, Rotary provides a necessary administrative platform to help put your Ikigai into practice. Already, there are several examples in the RCPC. I would like to point out just two, though there are many more. We have, the first one is of Oni and Nafisa Kakajiwala. Both were successful and highly paid professionals in the UK. They decided to shift to India, found their ikigai in providing services to the persons in vision improvement and giving artificial limbs to the deserving needy. They're serving the society while enjoying their life to the hilt. It's pleasure to see the radiance on their faces when they talk about their work. I have Surindra Shroff, a successful businessman, a rich man, but he found his ikigai in the paper bag project and looks forward to training the next batch in the paper bag craft to make the needy person self-reliant. When he was in Australia on a holiday, the mission continued with the assistant of the local Rotary Clubs, 
I am sure even if he goes for a trek in Himalayas, he will find deserving persons to train to make them financially independent. While talking about the paper project, the sense of purpose, pride, and happiness glows on his face. We have Anil Bora and so on and many more. Everyone can find the Ikigai, which is suitable or which is for, for him or her. Good news is only that you can find it. Bad news is you only can find, you can't outsource. The common queries which come, how do I find my Ikigai? To find Ikigai, you need to look inwards, provide honest answers in the four quadrants, and find the commonality. It's easier to find in a group workshop with participants of similar interests. There's another query. Does Ikigai for a person remain the same throughout his life? No. It is likely to change based on circumstances and age, it's advisable to reconfirm your Ikigai or find the changed Ikigai every five, five to ten years for sure. I have a few friends who would say, why the hell do I need to find my Ikigai? I'm happy playing golf, holidaying frequently and spending time with my grandchildren. My answer would be, yes, you're right provided you believe that you have no obligation to give back to the society. I'd like to give you a food for thought before I conclude. Let us reflect on our tradition of joint family and mohalla life. I can recall the tradition in Punjab because that's where I live. Mohalla was a one big family of 35 to 40 families. Joint family was a norm. The children never lacked love and attention because the grandparents always were there to provide it. Evening family prayers, we used to call it sandhya, was the norm when everybody slowed down. Food was mainly plant and dairy based and young and old, all had their friends. I recall my father always going to sit with his uh, five friends and my mother, when she was angry, she would say, ye chandal chokri jam gai hai. Cycling and walking was part of life. No household work gadgets. Everybody did the work with hands. Tradition of giving back to the society was prevalent, both by way of giving funds and in kind. Purpose of life revolved around family and mohalla. Drinking was not common. However, the only thing missing was moderation in eating and drinking. Whenever the Punjabis got together for eating and drinking, there was really no end. Let us go back to our roots, gentlemen, fellow Rotarians. Follow the nine rules and live a great life. Many thanks. Thank you, Ramesh. <coughs> Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you. It was a great uh, uh, presentation by you from the Japanese style of Ikigawa, and you gave the whole history, how it is followed in every country and uh, done this excellently. We have still some five, 10 minutes for a Q&A session. Anybody has any questions, please, uh, if you already written down, Ashish, you can take that question, or I will ask Rotarians to unmute themselves and uh, ask the question. So over to you, Ashish. So as of now, we don't have any question. If anybody has a question, they can go ahead and ask a question. Anybody has questions, you can unmute them. To, uh, uh, so uh, everybody can unmute themselves I, uh, and, uh, okay. and ask questions. 
Okay. Uh, but uh, everybody else should remain on mute so that the voice is clear. All right. So looks like everybody has understood how to live long. The longevity which uh, Ramesh has spoken, I think everybody has understood and he has by very nice explanation from his side. So looks like there are no questions. Let me ask the question, uh, Jinan. So Ramesh, uh, while we uh, study uh, Ikikai, Power of Now and many other things, Bhagavad Gita, everybody speaks about uh, being in the moment and many other... Uh, uh, any other uh, uh, many other um, uh, um, yeah, studies and the practices but it becomes very tough to really follow them and uh, be become a habit uh, you like today i i heard about it maybe for two days i will remember it and do it but how do you really inculcate this in life because uh, uh, I always find it very tough and just like me, many of the, them must be in the same boat. I agree with you fully and especially there is a, a skepticism in the minds of the people. I mean, for younger generation, younger people like you, Ashish, it is something in the unforeseen future. Why should one do this now? You would rather love to enjoy your life, eat all kinds of foods, have late nights, go for dances, right? Why go through all this? But as you grow older, that's the time when the realization sets in. I'm sure the older generation, all of us plus 65 people, including Narayan Rathi, who is 56 years old, right? We would work towards it, right? Because we have worked very hard. We have gone through the rat race. And this is the time, probably, to add a few years to enjoy the sunset years. It all depends on you, my friend. There is no vaccine available for this. <laughs> Bad. Even serum don't have it. Okay, great. Uh, anything else? Any other member wanting to ask? Just like to make a comment, not a question, but a comment, if I may. Yeah, Ruma, go ahead. So what I'm saying is, these are very difficult time for us. We have been locked in our homes, but if we try to look at the positive side, this has given us an opportunity to look inwards and try to uh, find all the things we have missed because of our busy schedules, we are looking and, you know, finding back our hobbies. We are bonding with our family. We are uh, making an effort to contact friends and family. So, and without the external pressures of uh, uh, traveling for the sake of traveling, going out for dinners, ordering food from outside. So we are, we are finding out that we can live with a lot less and be happy. So I think once this, these terrible times are over. Maybe if we can continue doing what we are doing, we may be able to find uh, more peace and a little bit towards what Ramesh has been talking about. Yes, uh, you are absolutely I, I right. It's a, it's a very good thought, Uma. If we if we do everything in moderation, even after the lockdown is over or whatever, I think it will be a good idea that we are adapted to this uh, constraint and we still enjoyed all our. Uh, two months of lockdown had made us realize how uh, efficient we can live and how smartly we can live without the uh, external aid. So it's a good thought, Rumar. Thank you. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, yes. Can I ask? Yeah, Sita, go ahead. Yes. Uh, is Ikigai a little, um, uh, you know, contrary to materialism and consumerism, what we have now? Uh, in society, is it uh, talking about life of simplicity, austerity? Is that and community giving? But, you're, uh, you're on the dot, Sita. You're on the dot because you yeah. can't do all this, especially living a community life, unless you follow that. You can't have a nutrition with the fresh foods unless. 
you follow that. You're absolutely, you're on the dot. Yeah. So one is there small question, sir. Age bar, age bar. Because when you are uh, young, uh, it, you know, you don't think of uh, this concept of ikigai. It is only when you have um, conquered all um, prosperity and then you talk of it. Uh, then only it is possible. That's the diatomy. That's the diatomy. You want it, but you don't want it, right? Unless you follow it from a younger age, like from the age of 40, 45, 50 at least, right? And which you can do. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had a, now time is up for the meeting, today's meeting. Any questions? I think extra questions, they can get in touch with Ramesh. Everybody knows Ramesh to get his, uh, he will be glad to answer your question. So 